Okay, with just one or two more tools, we're gonna start being able to realize the power of potential flow theory. So first, let's consider a condition on the velocity in incompressible flow. Now this is something that is, seems almost trivial once you realize it, but it's so important. So let's just write out the general equation for the conservation of mass. The continuity equation that we talked about last time. Now, if incompress we're in incompressible flow, then the density is constant. So since the density is constant, e rho by dt must be zero everywhere. And if we take the second term and expand it out, we could write it like this. Grad dot rho v equals grad rho dot v plus rho grad v. But again, if density is the same everywhere, the spatial gradient of rho must be, of the density rho must be zero. So what we get is zero plus rho dot v equals zero. So grad dot v, again we can drop the rho since that's a constant, must equal zero. So again this is for incompressible flow. So what does this say? The divergence Remember, that's the definition of divergence of the velocity is identically zero. Okay, we're building up several conclusions. Now it's time to start putting these together. We're going to do this using Laplace's equation. And we're going to be able to show that this is the governing equation for irrotational incompressible flow. So again, for mass conservation, we have that the divergence of the velocity is zero. And we know that if the flow is irritational, then we can define a potential of the velocity so that the velocity is the gradient of the velocity potential phi. And so if we just substitute that in, we get the grad dot of grad phi equals zero. And so it's possible to combine the operators since there's nothing between them. And we get grad squared phi equals zero. And this is known as Laplace's equation which you may have seen in your differential equations class. And the great news is that mathematicians have spent a lot of time thinking about Laplace's equation. So it's been extensively studied. And many, many solutions exist to this equation.
And for 2D, we can also show that the same equation governs the stream function. So why is this so important, you may ask? this important? Well, it all comes down to the fact that Laplace's equation is a linear differential equation. And you definitely learned what a linear differential equation is in your differential equations course. And like other linear phenomena, what that means is that a sum of solutions is also a solution. So what does that imply? So that means that if we have some potential that is the sum of any number of other potentials, this is a solution of the equation if each of phi 1, phi 2, phi n are solutions. So we can develop complex solutions using superposition. Now, this is a key realization that allows us to solve practical problems in aerodynamics analytically. So this enables an extremely powerful approach. To working with inviscid incompressible flow. which is to develop flow field solutions for several elementary flows so that each one is very simple. And then superimpose those solutions to obtain practical flow fields, like the flow around an airfoil. So we have one equation. Laplace's equation grad square phi equals zero. How do we get from that many different flow fields for all of these elementary flows? It's all the same equation. The secret is in the boundary condition. two types of boundary conditions that we're interested in.
I'll use B, C for boundary condition. So there's two types that we're interested in here. One is what we call the infinity boundary condition. So what this means is that the flow approaches a uniform free stream value or condition free stream condition far away from the body of interest. So that means if v infinity is in, say, the x direction, then at infinity, we would write that u is v infinity and v is 0. So that's one kind of boundary condition useful for aerodynamic flows. The other is the wall boundary condition. And this one's pretty logical. This says flow cannot penetrate the surface of an object. So in viscous flow, the velocity at a wall must be zero. This is the no-slip condition that we talked about a little bit earlier on. But in inviscid flow, that's not true. Instead, the velocity simply must be tangent to the wall. So v dot with the unit normal vector must be zero. So if we sketch that, here's a bit of wall that's curved. There's a velocity vector. There's the normal. So if we say, well, grad phi, that's the velocity dot n is zero. Well that means then that v phi dn equals zero or v psi ds in the streamwise direction equals zero because remember these fields uh, the field lines are perpendicular. So a couple of final notes on this idea of boundary conditions uh, for potential flows. So first, know that the body contour, so uh, the outline of an airfoil, for example, is a streamline. Right, the flow, the velocity vector is everywhere tangent to a streamline. So by definition, and from this boundary condition, v dot n equals zero, the body contour is a streamline. So if we have a body, that's described by y of the body is some function of x, then the stream function on the surface which is equal to the stream function at y equals yb must be constant because it's a single streamline. So let me just summarize the key takeaways here. 
So summary of our solution strategy for irrotational incompressible flow. One solve Laplace's equation for either the velocity potential or the stream function, depending on the situation, along with the boundary conditions. And usually, we're interested in a sum of elementary solutions. The second step is to determine the velocity field as either the gradient of v potential or from u equals v p d y and v equals negative or v psi dy and negative v psi dx. And finally, step three is to determine the pressure from p infinity plus one half q infinity or one half rho v infinity squared. Sorry, it's not one half rho infinity. I'll just write it this way. One half rho v infinity squared minus one half rho v squared. So solving Laplace's equation gets us the potential for the stream function that allows us to determine the velocity and from that we can determine pressure.